this is IBM Museum. And I've gone through and retooled my bench for my live stream tomorrow morning. But I wanted to give a, a quick uh, primer on the Twin X cabling. And this is, in fact, let me go through, bring up the Wikipedia link, go through and interact with that a little bit here. And they show an example connector. I'll, I'll show some of the cables. Uh, this is a real good view of a, of a cable connection. And you even see the silver and gold pins uh, being marked there. And it does have a bigger notch among that outside metal piece uh, that's a keyway. And I'll talk about that in a moment as well. But I'm going to go through and I'm going to provide the link um, to this on Wikipedia. And they initially go over the IBM, you know, what they call the legacy applications as IBM. And they cover over the System 34, 30, System 36, System 38, AS400 uh, that you'll commonly see these for the mid-range host. Um, and it gives some data as far as the data rate and things like that. And this is a balanced um, line for the, for the Twin X. So it's very good with shielding um, to not receive interference, but it is a very thick cable. Now, and Wikipedia goes through and describes this, is, this in detail. If you do search, I mean, you'll mainly find these current applications in networking nowadays. If you just search on the, uh, the twin X term, and I'm not going to go over those. Those are of course a different uh, thing entirely for what I want to cover. And let's get back to my camcorder view. I'm going to, of course, not have the, um, the, re the webcam going on the recording system just to give a, a wide field of view here. And this is a good example of a twin X cable, although it's very short. Um, you will see, of course, the same ends on each side. Sometimes you do see these shorty um, cords with what's called a balen on the end of them. And I'll get to the balens in a moment as well. But you can see the two pins in there, just as we saw on the Wikipedia article. Um, and it's got that bigger notch for going through and, and connecting that. Um, having a hard time, my camcorder's having a very hard time focusing on that. Um, but the, you know, the connections, as you would see on the old system 34s and 36s and 38s, even the early um, AS400s, I believe, you would, you would see these. Of course, you'd see this at, at the terminal end as well. Um, it does have that block in there for the, uh, the keyway. And you don't want to just go through and, and spin these connectors uh, trying to find that notch. You want to look to what you're doing because you can bend these pins inside here. And of course, both pins are very important in communication. So if you actually check yourself to go through and it should see and of course you can go through and tighten it down for the true connection. I don't know how many turns that is, but it goes around the lock and it locks that connector in place. So for going through and if you have say some shorter cable lanes and there, there's a way to go through and to effectively terminate these cables. I mean, it's it's like coax, but it's much more involved. And, you know, there are companies out there that still do twin X cabling. As I say, this cable is very thick, of course, compared to the networking standards of the day. 
but if you needed a, a longer cable, what you could also do is you could use these in line. And it's actually the same in both ends. And this, this is designed for going through and connecting your twin X cables together. Okay, I um, let's see what we can cover next. I talked about the um, Balins, and these are two examples. They just go through and they're actually media converters. They would go through to connect up to the, uh, and I've seen these on the, the Hydras that I'll get to in a moment. We just put the connector on and you're able to go through with a an RJ45. I'm not sure of the, um, the pinouts of these because this has four pins inside there. And I, I'm not really up on my uh, RJ45 nomenclature. They have a, where you, uh, you, it's a number of uh, spaces for connections and the actual connections that are, um, uh, the wires that are in there are cabled. And this one has a full eight um, and just goes through to where uh, it's, these are two different examples of what's out there. These even, this one even has, um, and I'm not sure if that's a grounding or something else um, for, for this Balin. And then of course done by uh, third party uh, companies. And you even have some information there that they list. Uh, they talk about pins four and five for some reason. Daisy Balin is I guess the name of the, that the company has for that. Okay, and we can probably get to um, <clears throat> kind of the other sorts of connections that you'll that we'll see on the Twin X world. These are a effectively a T. It's got the same connector on each end. These are used in the later. Well, they're used on the um, uh, the station. You can. Even the, uh, the terminal emulation adapters typically have a DB15 on the adapter end because you couldn't have this big old twin X connector there. So they, they uh, just have it in this style of connector. And it just as the cable was a pass through of the stations, you, you basically vampired in for this connection, taking it up to your display station and had another cable going to the next station. Um, that's a, a later version effectively of this one on the terminal end of like typically the uh, 3196, 3197 terminals and had that same T style of pass through. The later info window and info window two, and I'll have to get it right because this is effectively the info window, the original info window, and that info window G that I've uh, featured on a, a previous video as well. Um, you notice that these pins are actually inverted. Um, from it is the way it is on these uh, like these um, uh, emulation adapters have a, a socket or a female connection there and these are the the male pins and then you have just it's the same thing it's a pass through to where you have your twin X on uh, coming into the station and then a lead going out to the next station, just a, uh, an inline pass through. And the info window uh, twos 
you'll typically see uh, it more like this to where it's just like the, the display adapter connection and then it takes it out to a, a T um, for those uh, for a pass through. You, so you want to be really careful. If you pick these up, you want to be making sure that it does match to what end that you have on your info window. And then lastly, I want to show there's um, what they consider hydras, where they um, these are the of the style of the um, like for the AS400 systems. And it's got actually 16 connections of that DB25 field. This would go in a particular port on the AS400 to branch out where you have the eight uh, twin X connectors on this Hydra. And they're labeled for their um, for the addressing of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And I should go through at a later point and actually determine what the, uh, the pinout correlation is on that Hydra. But that's just a, a brief overview of the Twin X styles you can encounter. And IBM used those for the mid-range systems, the so System 34, System 36, System 38, and AS400. In the US market, um, as well as most of the rest of the world, they didn't really, um, there wasn't any other use other than that. In the Japanese market, they, um, they did use them for what they call the multi-station links. Um, and I may be able to cover that at a later point. Um, but that's kind of uh, separate from this, uh, this discussion. So just a brief overview. If you enjoyed this video, click on that like button, please. And subscribe to my channel if you have not already. I'll be going through and clearing this um, uh, material out of the way, the Twin X stuff for, for getting ready for my live stream tomorrow morning. Look to see you there. But this is IBM Museum. That's all I have for now. Thank you.